Writing research proposals is an important aspect of the processes of research in general and research in social sciences. Similarly, writing research proposals is an important component of the research degrees. So student researchers generally begin their research studies, which is a requirement of their research degrees. Uh, they generally begin the process with writing a research proposals. Um, in many cases, research proposals are required at the time of admission to research degrees. So in this presentation, I would like to generally discuss the general structure of a research proposal um, that is required of student researchers or junior researchers, and also the contents. So we will briefly discuss the contents of a general research proposal in social sciences in particular and in uh, other fields of studies in general. So let us begin with um, understanding a general structure of the research proposal. Generally, every research proposal has a title. Then it has an introductory part. Um, and then it, it has a statement of the problem um, and the issue significance rational and delimitation. Then it has background, the, the fourth part generally is the background or literature review part, uh, where there is also gap analysis. And then the research methodology section. This is then followed by the um, expected outcomes of the research process, which is also part of the research proposal. Then a timeline and schedule are also given in most research proposals. And of course, there are references and appendices and in some cases, budgets as well, a part of the research proposal. So this is a general structure of the research proposal. Uh, there might be some variation um, which will be in response to certain specific requirements of educational institutions or um, funding agencies. But this is the general structure that um, covers most essential aspects of the research proposal um, in general research degree programs and in other research studies where funding is needed. So. Beginning with the very first component of the research proposal, the research proposal should have a, a clear and precise title. Um, so generally, the readers, the professors, they, they will begin with having a look at the title of the proposal. And so there generally is a title page where, the, where there is the title of the proposed study. And this is also followed then by information related to the researcher uh, or researchers or team of researchers, including their names and affiliations. This is then um, followed by the introductory part or introduction to the uh, proposed research study. And this section uh, the first substantial section of the research proposal has um, actually describes the objectives of the research and the research questions and in some cases research hypotheses. Um, again, research objectives should be clear and precise. Research questions should be clear and precise and hypotheses if there are studies, especially experimental quantitative type of studies might have hypotheses instead of research questions. In some cases, research proposals might have both um, research questions and hypotheses. In some cases, um, there, will, there might simply be objectives of particular research uh, studies. In any, in, uh, in any case, um, the introduction section 
will introduce the reader to the aims, objectives, um, and research questions and hypotheses of the research, of the proposed research. Then the next part, which generally in many cases, this is part of the introduction part, that is the statement of the problem. So what is the problem or the issue that is being explored that the proposal aims to explore, that the researchers aim to explore. Now this is something that is called statement of the problem or the issue is actually stated clearly again and precisely. This section also, this is followed by a subsection where the significance, importance or rationale of the study are described. In other words, why is it important that this particular study is conducted? So this is something that is responded to in the significance or rationale, rationale section of the proposal. Then this is followed by the generally um, uh, the delimitation section where the limits and boundaries of the research are described. This is again, this is mainly something that relates to quantitative research studies. Then this is followed by another important uh, section of the research proposal called the background um, or literature review section of the um, research proposal. This is basically an extension of the introduction and so the researchers um, in this section of the research proposal gave comprehensive detailed background related to the issue that is being explored. So literature review, um, again the, the length and depth of the literature review section will depend on the kind of research. In most quantitative studies in social sciences, there might be um, richer background, more detailed background. In more qualitative type of studies, uh, exploratory grounded with exploratory grounded approaches where issues are explored, uh, uh, um, a kind of new issues, innovative issues are explored for the first time. There will be less emphasis on this section, uh, but this is an important section of the of the proposal because um, um, the inclusion of this section tells the reader uh, who might be a professor or who might be a funding agency uh, representative to actually have good insights into the knowledge and scholarship of the researcher and also to have insights into the gaps that actually exist and that, um, and that need to be filled through this research. So the background also helps in identifying possible gaps of research for further studies. And so there should be uh, a comprehensive introduction to the background of the issue that is being explored and ultimately towards the end of this section, there should be identification of gap that needs to be filled and there should be analysis, critical analysis of that gap that needs to be filled. Once this is done, um, the aims and objectives and the background of the research study, um, the proposed research study um, is, uh, is uh, at this stage clear to the readers. The next section is about the why, uh, the how of the research. So how is the, how will the proposed study be conducted? And there comes the research methodology section, which is again an important section in the research proposal. So in the research methodology section, um, this, these are the important aspects of the research methodology section. The first one is the identification and description of the research design that is, uh, that is 
uh, uh, being adopted for this study. So, like in social sciences, there could be quantitative research design or qualitative research design or mixed method research design. Then the next uh, consideration is uh, the sample. Uh, so what is the sample and the rationale of that particular sample? Again, depending on the research design, the research type, the sample should be in line with the research design. For example, if there is qualitative case study as a research design, then you might have smaller samples. If, if the researcher is conducting quantitative studies, the, research, the samples might be larger and uh, based on representativeness of the population. The other important aspect of the research methodology section is the, um, is the description of the data collection and data analysis uh, methods. This should be, these should be clearly presented and described. So what, uh, in what ways data will be collected? Uh, for example, interviews will be used or questionnaires will be used and why those data collection methods will be used. And also what, uh, in what ways the dat data that has been, that will be obtained will be analyzed. So. Thematic, for example, thematic analysis might be suggested where there is qualitative data um, and statistical analysis might be suggested here when the research data is mostly quantitative. In th this section also has the description of the authentication processes and the validity and reliability issues. So what will be done to make the process, this process of research authentic and to establish validity and reliability of the research process? This is something that will be described in this section. Then what will be the expected outcomes? Again, this is uh, generally an educated guess in most cases. In qualitative studies, we might not have this section, but in many quantitative studies, experimental studies, when we, where we have hypotheses, we might include expected outcomes of our research. So for example, uh, uh, a simple expected outcomes will be that at the end of this uh, research study, we will have a better understanding of this particular uh, research issue. So what do we expect to get at the end of our research? This is something that will be um, given, a description of this will be given in this section. Then the research proposal has, uh, should have, especially the research that is being conducted because research is actually bound in time and space. So there should be timeline or timetable or schedule uh, as part of uh, a good research proposal. People, researchers, professors will be interested to know, or fund, funding agencies might be interested to know when and when are you going to do the difference, to go through the different stages of the research and when will the research process come to an end. So the timeline is an important aspect of the research proposal. Then references, um, of course, because uh, generally in research studies, the background, the literature review, the methodology section, uh, we, have, we use references. And as a result, details related to those references should be given at the end um, in the form of a references section. Then some research proposals might also have appendices, um, and those appendices might be, for example, uh, the research tools uh, that we use, so some researchers uh, might give those in appendices. Appendices might also be in the form of, for example, budgeting for the proposal or for the research process. 
So as you can see, these are, these are the important aspects of the research proposal. And uh, the title, the introduction part, the part related to objectives and research questions, the importance of research. We need to know about the background of research and the gap that we, that we are, want to fill. Similarly, the how of the research process or the methodology of the research process is something that we need to know about. Uh, we might also want to know that what, what we will get at the end of the research process. So expected outcomes is an important aspect of, aspect of it. And then we also, in many cases, want to know when the research process uh, or when different stages of the research process uh, will be accomplished. And so that is something that we need to know in the form of timeline or schedule. And we need to know about the background of um, or the previous studies, so the references section. And we need to know uh, the budgeting uh, involved or the expend expenditure, the possible expend expenditure that uh, might uh, especially if the research is funded, so the funding agencies might be interested in that. So the other uh, interesting uh, useful thing that we need to think about is actually the length of the research proposal. So again, it will vary um, and some research proposals are extensive, some research proposals are shorter proposals. And so the length in terms of the words um, or pages um, of the research proposal, these will depend on the requirements of individual educational institutions or funding agencies, or maybe research supervisors. So they will advise you um, on the word limit of the research proposal. So generally, the shorter the research proposal is better, the shorter, more precise, and to the point. Because at the proposal stages, people are interested in the highlights of the proposed research rather than all the details at this stage. 